Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We are continuing our Pac-12 football predictions today, and our next team is coming off their second straight 5-7 and seven season, but returns 18 starters and could be a surprise team in the Pac-12. They are the California Golden Bears. Justin Wilcox really surprised me with the job he did at California last year. I only had the Bears going 1-11 in his first year, and he got the Golden Bears to 5-7 and seven and lost three games by three points or less, losing by one to Arizona, three to Stanford, and three to UCLA. So if they just won one of those games, they would have gone bowling in Wilcox's first year at California. So he really surprised me. This year they returned 18 starters from the team from last year, and they will certainly get back to a bowl game this year after having back-to-back Five and seven years. They returned 10 starters on offense with quarterback Ross Bowers, who threw for over 3,000 yards last year. They have running back Patrick Laird, who rushed for 1,127 yards last year. They get wide receiver Vic Wharton back, so a big-time target for Bowers. Uh, but recent news uh, that we just found out fairly recently that Demetrius Robertson, one of their big-time wide receivers, former five-star wide receiver, will be transferring from California to Georgia. So we weren't really expecting that. That's a big time loss for California. The offense should still be very, very productive. Bauer still has some very solid uh, targets to throw to, but obviously never good when you lose a soft receiver like Robertson. But the Bears also returned five offensive linemen as well. So big time news for Bowers for protection and big time news for Laird to get some holes and maybe uh, create some big plays on the ground. On defense, they return eight starters. Wilcox, a defensive-minded coach, coming from defensive coordinator from Wisconsin, bringing that same type of scheme, bringing that same type of mindset over to California. Uh, they have eight starters there, led by Luke Beckett and Rusty Becker, along the defensive line, so a veteran uh, team there, veteran defensive line there. But the secondary is what I'm most excited about. They return all four starters in the secondary, Ashton Davis, Jalen Hawkins, Cameron Bynum, and Elijah Hicks. So, very, very experienced secondary, which is huge when you're going up against some of these better quarterbacks, not just in the Pac-12 North, but also in the entire Pac-12. So that's going to be huge and probably the strength of this entire defense. So you put a really good secondary with a very potent offense, and California could be a team that surprises some people, maybe pulls off a couple upsets along the way. They open up the season against North Carolina. And last year they went on the road to get to a North Carolina team that struggled last year going 3-9, and nine, was not expecting that, and won that game 35-30. to 30, And really, it was, they won by more than that. North Carolina scoring way late in the game, a touchdown that didn't even matter. And I was shocked by that. That got California that one win that I had predicted. It wasn't even against North Carolina. This year they host the Tar Heels. The Tar Heels will be much more improved. Uh, Chassera at quarterback. I assume that's who will be starting there. Uh, they also have a very improved defense with eight returning starters there. And they were hit with so many injuries last year. This game will once again be close like it was last year. But with California hosting this game, the excitement is high. The returning starters. I think the Golden Bears get a big time win over a solid Power 5 opponent to open up the year. I think they get a win on the road against BYU as well. I think BYU, they struggled last year going 4-9, might improve a little bit, but still have a lot of questions to be answered, and they've got to stay healthy. They really have to stay healthy. Despite it being on the road, uh, this is a BYU team that I think does have their work cut out for them, faces a very, very difficult schedule, and I think California will get the win over the Cougars, will get the win over Iowa State, and they are 3-0, three games a win, three uh, wins away from making a bowl game in Wilcox's second year at California. They get a big-time bye week before hosting Oregon at home. And this is a game that I have advised Oregon to not overlook. California's coming off a bye. They're a dangerous team. They're going to be an explosive team. And they're getting to host an Oregon team that some people have pegged as a, uh, a team that could potentially win the Pac-12 North if they can get wins or a win over Washington or Stanford, both of which have to travel to Oregon. So Oregon certainly can't afford to overlook this game against the California team that you know, wasn't great last year but wasn't bad, and they're going to be rested. I'm going to give the win to the Ducks. Would not surprise me in the slightest if California can pull off the upset over the Ducks. I mean, they've got Justin Herbert coming in at quarterback. He doesn't make up the entire team. Oregon's still going to have a very, very potent defense with Jim Levitt as defensive coordinator, and then Jordan Scott and Jalen Jelks along that defensive line. They're going to give this California offensive line some fits. Wouldn't be surprised if the Golden Bears pull off the upset, but I'm going to give Oregon the benefit of the doubt and give them a win over California. And then they face Arizona on the road. Remember last year at California, losing to Arizona just by one point, 45 to 44. This year they bring in Kevin Sumlin for the Wildcats. The, uh, he got fired from Texas A&M, now taking the head coaching position. We've seen what he can do with solid quarterbacks, much like he did uh, with Kenny Hill briefly at Texas A&M, but also Johnny Manziel in his first year at Texas A&M. And now he's going into his first year at Arizona. He's got a quarterback much like Manziel and Khalil Tate, a very fast uh, athletic quarterback, dual threat, 
uh, can beat you through the air, can definitely beat you on the ground, really had a big coming out party about midway through last season. Defenses are going to know how to stop Tate this year, but it is on the road. Kevin Sumlin's going to bring in a pretty brilliant offensive scheme. I think Arizona gets a win over California. I think this is one where the California defense will really struggle. Will Cox is going to have a plan to shut down Khalil Tate, but I think in the end, uh, I think Arizona gets the best of them for the second straight year. Then UCLA at home, Chip Kelly making his return to the college ranks, making his return to the Pac-12, not just college, but back to the conference where he uh, rose Oregon to such uh, national dominance. But California hosts UCLA this year, and even though they have Chip Kelly, I really think they're going to struggle. I think UCLA will be lucky if they if Chip Kelly can get them to a bowl game this year. They face the t- probably the toughest schedule in the nation. They have a lot of inexperience on both sides of the ball. Have a quarterback battle going on right now. Signs aren't pointing up for UCLA. I don't think Chip Kelly's going to be able to work his magic in year one. He will down the road. California snaps that two-game losing streak and gets a win over the Bruins. On the road at Oregon State, you got Jonathan Smith coming in as a first-year head coach at Oregon State. Back to his alma mater. Probably going to be the right hire in time. But Oregon State, not a whole lot of high expectations this year. A team that's probably expected to struggle. Should improve on that 1-11 record they had last year. But I just don't see Jonathan Smith getting Oregon State to the point of competitiveness where they can compete against some of the North's best teams. So even though it's on the road, I think California's offense has a pretty good field day against this Oregon State defense. They do have talent on both sides of the ball. Jake Lutton at quarterback, namely, and eight returning stars on defense. Maybe they can surprise some people. Maybe this could be a big-time win for Jonathan Smith in his first year. I just don't see it. I think California gets the win. And so right now, they're sitting at five wins with five games left to play. And fortunately for them, they've got three of those games at home, and they're two road games, one at a tough USC team, the other one against a Washington State team that's not going to be too dominant. We'll start off with Washington, and this is a, a Huskies team that I really think that could really compete in the, for the college football playoff spot. I think that they are probably the best team they've had since 2016 when they made the college football playoff and faced Alabama, losing that game 24-7. they got Jake Browning coming in. they got Miles Gaskin at quarter, uh, running back. They've got a super, super, super solid defense. Chris Peterson, an offensive genius. Even though this game's at home for California, who's given Washington some fits in the past, I don't think they're going to be able to get the win over the Huskies. This is a dangerous Huskies team that I think has the potential to maybe go 11-1 or even better undefeated. It will probably be the heavy favorite in the Pac-12 North. So I'm going to give them a loss here to the Huskies there. So that's not good, but they're still one win away. Just got to get one more win, get to a bowl game for Wilcox. They go on the road to Washington State. The Mike Leach team, I have a lot of respect for him. He's done a great job as a head coach in general at Texas Tech, getting Washington State uh, up to contention in the Pac-12. They lose a lot of starters this year, uh, but namely Luke Falk at quarterback. What a heck of a quarterback. I have a lot of respect for him. I think had he stayed healthy uh, last year, they could have won that bowl game over Michigan State, uh, but he, he just couldn't get the job done. A little unhealthy. He got drafted in the NFL draft last season. But this is a Washington State team that returns just 10 starters. Very, very weak uh, offense. They do return Gardner Minshew or get Gardner Minshew in the transfer from ECU, East Carolina. Uh, but even though it's on the road, I think California is going to be able to go on the road and defeat a Washington State team that I think is going to have a rebuilding year uh, after losing so much talent on both sides of the ball. So a win for the Golden Bears there. And then a tough little stretch here. USC and Stanford. Uh, Stanford probably the second best or even maybe the best in some opinion, people's opinions. Team in the Pac-12 North. We'll start with USC. Most people's pick to win the Pac-12 South. Yes, they lose Sam Darnold, the number three overall pick in the NFL draft last year, but will still be a solid team in the South. We'll turn 13 starters. The defense is going to be just fine. Plenty of talent there. Uh, and then at quarterback, it might be Matt Fink there. They've got a quarterback battle going on. That's who I put my money on. I put my money on Fink to win that battle. Uh, and they do return some solid wide receivers as well. So I think Clay Helton's going to have this team ready to go. It's on the road. It's a difficult place to play. I think California loses this game to the Trojans. But I will say that I do not think the Trojans are going to be as good as they were last year and the year before that uh, when they had Darnold and so much talent. Then they get Stanford at home. Once again, uh, they've clinched – no, I'm sorry. Yes, they have clinched bowl eligibility. They're at six wins. Now they're just trying to uh, improve on that record, get to a better bowl game. They get Stanford at home. Last year only losing to Stanford by three points. And last year Stanford was a good team. They had KJ Costello. They had Bryce Love. Uh, They had a lot of those returning stars that are coming back this year on the offensive side of the ball. I just think the Stanford team is actually going to be better than they were last year. So even though California hung with them on the road last year, only losing by three points, I think they lose another nail-biter at home this year. So I'm going to give them their second straight loss to the Cardinal. But they close out the year with a win over Colorado, a team that 
you know, two years ago was competing for the Pac-12 championship game, missed out on the bowl game last year, are going to be borderline bowl eligible this year. They returned their quarterback to Stephen Montez, a big-time get for them. Uh, but the, the key is going to be uh, Colorado's defense. Can the defense get the job done for the Buffaloes? Not, I don't think they're going to get the job done this game on the road to California, but maybe they can do enough to get back to a bowl game uh, and hopefully win it, unlike the bowl loss they had back in 2016. So this is going to give California and Justin Wilcox's second year with the Golden Bears a 7-5 and five record. Do you think about that? He flips the script. He's been there for two years. He goes 5-7 and seven in the year one. He goes 7-5 and five the year after that. He flips the record around. And obviously a heck of a hire for the Golden Bears. If he can get them to this type of record in just two years, he's right at 500, I know. Uh, but a California team that, that struggled really after the loss of Jared Goff, uh, if he gets them back to a bowl game and wins that game and caps off an eight-win season, things are going to be looking up for this California team for years to come. Looking at the schedule right now, any game that I have, I don't really see any game that I have pegged as a loss that I think could turn into a win for California. I really don't. I mean, Washington, Oregon, Stanford, the top three teams in the North, and then road games against Arizona and USC. I just don't see any of those games right now that I could feasibly see California pulling off an upset and winning, even though they get to host Oregon and Washington and Stanford. Very beneficial to them. I just don't see them getting a win over any of them this season. But this is a dangerous California team. Uh, I would say if they're going to pull off any upset, it's going to be Oregon right here with that bye week on September 22nd. Getting to Oregon coming off the bye at home. Maybe catching them a little off guard. Oregon looking ahead to some of the bigger games of the season. Watch out. California could pull off an upset there. A dangerous team that no Pac-12 team should overlook this season. So as always, please go check us out on Twitter at Gridiron Expert on Instagram at the Gridiron Expert. Always here on YouTube. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.